let's now move to the topic of digital transformation in China and in the US and that comparison. And I'd like to invite now Sun Tian Shu, visiting professor of information systems, director of the Center for Technology, Big Data and Digital Transformations at CKGSB to deliver his presentation. Professor Sun, welcome and over to you. Thank you. Thank you, Michael, for the uh, introduction. And uh, um, thanks for having me to um, this uh, uh, event. And uh, I wonder if you can see my slides. Yes, we can. Full cool. screen now. Got them, yes. Yeah. Thank you. So it's, uh, it's great to share this very exciting topic of digital transformation in China and the US, some observations on the digital ecosystem. Uh, in the next uh, eight to 10 minutes, I would like to give a very brief uh, discussion on the contrast between uh, China and US on digital transformation and digital ecosystem. I hope the uh, contrast can uh, not only help us understand the difference uh, between China and US, like when, especially when entering the, uh, the, the China, uh, like Chinese market, but also could uh, um, unravel some general principles um, for the uh, underlying forces in the digital ecosystem in China. Um, and uh, um, the observations is based on my um, work and also research across US and China in the past 12 years. Um, so where I have uh, been both a professor at CKGSP in China and also a tenured professor at yeah, USC in, um, in, in US. And also I worked in the uh, Facebook Korea Science, um, Alibaba, Adobe, uh, NetEase, uh, Group on Living Social, and also consulted a range of startups in the US and China. And the observation is really based on um, like my work experience and really specifically related to today's theme, the uh, global data landscape. Uh, last year, I was invited to uh, write an overview with four Lover laureates in Columbus on the um, uh, data calculus in the digital era, which in, in which we also covered uh, 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 some recent development in the uh, in China on the data regulation. But for the interest of time, I'd just like to uh, highlight three key differences uh, between US and China on the digital transformation. Um, like based on the comparison, if you see the, uh, if you're familiar with the uh, digital ecosystem on both sides, you can see there seems to be a, a, a like nice correspondence uh, between the two ecosystem. However, I would argue that the um, underlying kind of dynamics and the, the uh, uh, underlying uh, uh, forces are quite different, especially in their growth model, in the kind of uh, concentration and scope of data, and also in the innovation mode. Um, so let me elaborate the, uh, the first key difference. So I, was, I would like to summarize the key difference using this figure. So in, in, like while I was working uh, in Silicon Valley, like I worked quite a few years, it's very interesting that there are there is very um, uh, uh, little competition, head-to-head -head competition on the core interest between the internet between the tech giants. There, like if you if you if you think like Amazon does not directly compete with Facebook, right? And 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 Google does not directly compete with Netflix. And if you pick like any two in the top ten tech firms in the U.S., they do not directly compete head-to-head -head in some of the core interests. But in China. It's very interesting that there's a very strong competition between um, all the top giants. If you think about like ByteDance and Show, the, the short video uh, platforms versus Alibaba and GD.com, uh, they actually compete very heavily on the uh, e-commerce, which is the core interest for Alibaba and, and GD. If you think about ByteDance versus Tencent, then they compete very uh, uh, strongly on the like gaming, on social on entertainment. And also between like uh, uh, Tencent and Alibaba for sure, they compete on like mobile payment and so on and so forth. And DD versus Meituan, like seemingly, seemingly quite different platform, they compete on the kind of uh, uh, ride sharing and so on and so forth. And also Meituan versus Alibaba, Meituan is like Groupon in China versus Alibaba, they compete heavily on like local service, food delivery and so on and so forth. So the, 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 it's, it's very interesting to see this a uh, uh, key difference, which I summarize as the horizontal versus vertical growth mode. The Chinese uh, digital platforms are growing more in a horizontal way, right? Across sectors, right? From e-commerce to fintech, to logistics, to like uh, uh, local service and so on. But the US firms are more growth 
in a, in, a, in a specialized way, like Facebook is entering the global markets, right? And it's more focused on social networking, but in like through different media, like through um, uh, like uh, Facebook, Instagram, WhatsApp, then like uh, uh, Meta, right? The, the uh, VR and Oculus and so on and so forth. Um, and also like the focus is, is quite different. Like the Chinese tech firms, they're more focused on domestic uh, growth versus the U.S. firms are, are, are very much focused on global expansion. Uh, also, like for instance, Microsoft, a Amazon Web Service, they have a lot of the uh, growth coming from the uh, international markets. Um, and the, the the implication of such uh, difference in growth mode is profound because it has impact on the firm scope, on the innovation mode, and also very importantly to today's discussion on the scope of the data, right? And also all the AI applications based on such data. If you think about, for instance, like Tencent, they have data across a wide range of activities of an individual consumer, like uh, uh, um, through which they can kind of build uh, like uh, AI um, applications, like new algorithms to kind of provide more customer experience. Uh, whereas Facebook, they're more focused on the, uh, uh, like uh, they, they connect more data in a specific area sector uh, um, and, but, in like uh, at a broader uh, uh, scale uh, across the uh, uh, international markets. So the, the question here is also why so? Why like the Chinese tech firms are growing this way, like wider and wider, right? Horizontally, whereas the US uh, platforms are digital platforms growing in a more uh, vertical way. My um, research and my observation is the following. I think it fundamentally relates to the, 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 the monetization model and market size between the two countries. Um, I, I was asking, asking this question to a lot of executive, executives in my class at uh, CKJSB, like whether Chinese internet market is big enough. And most of them say yes, but my, my answer is no, right? My answer is the, the, the kind of domestic market uh, for the Chinese uh, tech platforms is actually very crowded, right? There, in general, there are four types of monetization model for the digital platform, advertising, content monetization, game, and e-commerce. But if you look at if you look closely at like advertising market and content monetization market, the the Chinese firm actually uh, 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 need to compete on much smaller uh, uh, kind of revenue base as compared to the U.S. Right, and on the game and e-commerce is kind of comparable in in terms of total size of market, but in terms of per capita, like per per user. Is much less. So um, with this, the kind of with this kind of uh, uh, limited kind of uh, uh, market revenue, like the, the Chinese platform is actually constrained by this relatively uh, a small domestic market, especially given the market value of those platform. So they they, they have this strong kind of pressure uh, and to kind of either compete fiercely within the domestic market, kind of go across more and more industry sectors, right? In order to sustain their market cap, they, they market uh, uh, kind of uh, uh, like their, their stock price, or they need to explore the possibility of globalization. However, the globalization has become more and more challenging for a lot of those Chinese uh, uh, digital um, uh, companies uh, because of various reasons. Um, and, uh, and with this, you can see more and more like uh, domestic competition, right? In Chinese, we also call it involution, right? Nature. So like uh, in this, and this is a, a, a important to keep after this Chinese uh, market, you might face very fierce competition in a lot of those uh, uh, sectors from the incumbent in that specific sector, but also from giants, which kind of all across. This is the first key difference. And because of this, because of this difference in the growth mode, uh, you may also see a key difference between the data scope or data concentration, uh, um, like uh, um, be like in, in, like between the two markets. In, in China, the data uh, collected by the, the the top platforms are of uh, have broader scope, and the data is more concentrated in a few key players. In the uh, uh, in the uh, Chinese market, but in the U.S., like in general, especially before uh, the uh, uh, Cambridge Analytics event, 
and before like 2020, you see a more open data ecosystem. And also the, the scope of their data collection is much narrower, right? Like Facebook only social, like Amazon mostly e-commerce, e-commerce and also some like uh, video streaming data on consumer. And then Google mostly on search and Android and so on and so forth. But in China, you for instance, you see WeChat or like uh, uh, ByteDance may span a, a, a range of sectors and so on. And such data collection and data assets have fundamental implications on the development of AI. So this is uh, 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 like uh, an interesting comparison by uh, Dr. Kaifu Li um, in his book, right? On the uh, difference in AI development between uh, US and China. So like, and it definitely echoes my own experience working in Silicon Valley and also working in China in the top tech firms. Like for instance, uh, uh, you, the US uh, firms are more research driven, expert driven. For instance, if you look at all the uh, top AI models uh, and also framework from like PyTorch, Cafe uh, to the recent GPT-3 model, the diffusion model and so on and so forth, it's mostly by those pioneers like uh, uh, Jeff Hinton, uh, um, like uh, Yen LeCun and so on and so forth. But China has a comparative advantage in those data driven applications and also in those kind of uh, uh, I would call it uh, like uh, scene based or or, or like uh, uh, like uh, scenario based applications, right? They have very interesting, for instance, uh, integration of uh, um, data and also business models across sector. For instance, e-commerce and mobile payment, right? For instance, online sh shopping and offline shopping. For instance, like uh, uh, local service like ride sharing plus. Like uh, 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 like grocery sh uh, shopping online, right? So you see a lot of those interesting uh, business model innovations empowered by rich data collected by the uh, uh, the digital platform. So this is leads to a very interesting difference. And also, if you think about uh, uh, companies like TikTok, right? They initially actually grow based on the data collected on Chinese consumers, right? And then the AI model is tra trained and the hyperparameters are tuned. Then like such model become full-fledged and can be kind of uh, uh, used like in their uh, global expansion and so on and so forth. So this can keep the uh, scope and concentration and also on the AI development. Now, like I want to reach the final uh, uh, difference, which I, I call it the, uh, the kind of digital innovation mode, right? And, and I, I would um, like uh, um, uh, uh, say that the U.S. is more. Uh, the U.S. is more based on a data-driven, bottom-up innovation mode. I I'm talking about private sector, and the Chinese company is more based on a strategy-driven, top-down uh, innovation mode. And let me use my own research in the area of digital experimentation as an example. Uh, while I was working at Facebook, I was amazed, fascinated by the um, like data-driven and uh, culture, and also the like the, the decentralized, bottom-up innovations in the company, right? There are tens of thousands like of experimentation um, every year uh, by their frontline employees to uh, uh, experiment with different product features, algorithms, and so on and so forth. For instance, some of the uh, most important innovations at Facebook like Newsfeed is not like uh, designed by Mark Zuckerberg, but actually like discovered by the frontline engineers and the product managers, right? Whereas in China, you see more of those strategy driven, top down innovations, right? As I mentioned, like for instance, WeChat, for instance, Taobao and uh, on financial, they have a lot of those very interesting business model innovation, business model experimentation empowered by the kind of data and also the top down uh, design. And also from a policy perspective, you see the Chinese government have a lot of those uh, uh, policy exper experiments uh, um, in both in the uh, private sector and also uh, in their regulation. And uh, uh, the interesting thing is how to combine both, right? How to uh, uh, combine the strength of both uh, when you enter the uh, chi like uh, uh, China and, and also when you kind of adapt your um, kind of both data strategy and, uh, and also digital competition strategy in this new market. So I would uh, stop here for the interest of time, but I want to summarize um, the three key differences uh, between US and China on the digital transformation. And like, for instance, I met, the first one is the horizontal versus vertical growth in, the, in their digital uh, platform ecosystem. The second one is data-driven versus uh, bottom, uh, like uh, data-driven bottom-up versus strategy-driven top-down. 
in the digital innovation mode. And final one is the data and AI ecosystem, uh, which is ex expert driven versus uh, the application or data driven. But I would just want to see uh, a few sentences on another very important dif uh, uh, difference, which I don't have time to cover today, but I have uh, spent a lot of efforts uh, uh, exploring the enterprise technology ecosystem in US and China. In US, like the, uh, the ecosystem is based on Amazon Web Service, Microsoft Azure, and Google Cloud. In China, it's based on Alibaba Cloud, Tencent Cloud, and Huawei Cloud. And, uh, but it's very different. And uh, uh, I'll just highlight two set of keywords, private versus public, closed versus open. Like in China, the most of the enterprise software software as a service, SaaS, PaaS, ICE, are deployed now in the form of a private cloud, right? And especially for state-owned enterprise, for the uh, government, and also for uh, a lot of the uh, traditional uh, uh, enterprise. Um, and, uh, and this leads to fundamental difference in the marginal cost and also in the kind of, uh, uh, in the uh, scalability of the cloud-based technology and ecosystem. Because uh, for the, for, for the US ecosystem, the public cloud allows the, both the cloud companies and also the uh, PaaS and SaaS companies on top of those cloud companies to uh, easily deploy their uh, uh, software at a very low marginal cost. And they can quickly scale and updates and uh, like their R&D to this ecosystem. But in China, in like the, the, the deployment, the, the process and the uh, the, 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 the economies of scale is very different and which can explain a lot of differences we see in the uh, 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 like uh, um, uh, uh, in, in the kind of startup, startup ecosystem, right? In US, you see hundreds of unicorns in the area of enterprise technology and also many established one in a tier structure like Amazon Web Service, which is a uh, 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 1000 billion uh, uh, company on top of that, you have quite a few 100 billion companies like Salesforce, Databricks, Snowflakes, Adobe, and so on and so forth. Then on top of it, you have many uh, 10 billion companies, then unicorns. But in China, you have a few tech giants, right, cloud companies. But then uh, a, a very large number of uh, uh, outsourcing companies, deployment companies, and so on and so forth. So I won't have the time to dive into this detail, but I think it's a lot of uh, much related to this uh, private versus public cloud and also closed versus open ecosystem. Like in, in China, in short, you kind of deploy the enterprise service and software by people, right? But in US, a lot of those uh, uh, deployment of software and service is based on API, based on the open ecosystem. And that leads to a fundamental difference when you need, want to enter the, the market. Mm. Up here, and, uh, um, yeah, Michael, I turn right. the uh, professor. Back so to you. Fascinating stuff. Thank you very, very much. And uh, as I said, it, it, extraordinary research, and you made very clear some of the key differences you see. And that I expect poses challenges. It also presents some opportunities for businesses trying to operate in those jurisdictions. So, Professor Sun, thank you very much.